Buenas tardes. Good afternoon. I would like to thank the organizers of this meeting, especially Américo Castilla, for this invitation. I'm sorry to have this voice because and I couldn't attend yesterday because of a terrible flu that I caught here in Buenos Aires. And it is a great pleasure to be here today with you in spite of it. Let me see how many pages I can read because of my sore voice, but I'll give it a try. I'd like to make an account that's called Jazz Changes the Questions of Museums. When the Chinese archaeologist found out in August 2035 that he had been granted a scholarship for his research on four innovative museums in Latin America, he felt a bit at a loss. The acceptance letter explained that because of his background and curriculum, he had been selected, but it was no, of no strategic interest for him to compare the Asian archaeological museums with those of Mexico and Peru. Now, what the science and what the Chinese Science and Technology Council was concerned about was why, over the past two decades, the ways of collecting and museographic styles were mixed in a process where nothing seemed to distinguish art museums from anthropology museums, natural science museums from telecommunication museums. The letter mentioned some events occurred in 2015 where apparently this trend had consolidated. This trend to a confusion of disciplines had consolidated. There were dispersed facts, but they seemed to be symptomatic. In September 2015, the International Festival of uh, Literature in Edinburgh had invited as key figures Mexican writers, but Nick Barley, its director, asked the conceptual artist Gabriel Orozco to choose the authors of fiction, chronic, and poetry. That same year, the occurrence start started by Guggenheim Museums had uh, strengthened in connection with altering exhibitions of contemporary art, motorbikes, pre-Columbian uh, artifacts, and decent designs of African fashion. When anthropologists and philosophers curated those exhibitions, they relocated the uh, sense of aesthetic in biopolitics and the archaeology of digital baggage. The jury suggested to this man paying attention to an international colloquium that took place in September 2015 in Buenos Aires that called for a radical uh, upturn or a radical turning point asking uh, for the reimagining of museum. This mix of disciplines would make it possible to have access to secret documentation on trafficking of historical uh, heritage as well as artistic heritage that Google was delivering on a weekly basis to Chinese authorities visiting pre-Hispanic and colonial pieces kept in the houses of four Asian business people who were uh, collectors of American art. And as soon as the archaeology started to work, he started to build algorithms to explore the interconnections between collectors, museums, publics, systems of information and dissemination of content. He detected when mergers ha of uh, museums had taken place, trying to remember the migrant ones to show the pride of each national identity. And because of that, 
in order to, by doing that, set aside the challenges. Since the end of the 20th century, there has been a multiplication of museums devoted to showing collections and others that are not heritage, created for the desire of the building or to revitalize cities that are depressed because of the uh, close of industries, thus encouraging tourism. There were artists that uh, rejected the musification of their works, others are incorporated to their heritage, cinema and videos, computers and social networks, i.e. the different devices and ways of seeing that eroded the museum-like way of telling stories. The reactions that had taken place after that colloquium in Buenos Aires by those who, only, who could only see confusion in this led them to write a manifesto. Please, let's stop reimagining the museum. Let's move away from this conceptual vertigo fostered by um, businessmen of fashion and luxury curators who want to replace museographers, collectors of ad uh, advertising surprises that um, find it uh, despicable uh, to uh, have institutional rituals. There was a time when the renovation of museums was focused on architecture and landscape. Frank Gehry, who built deconstructed museums in all continents, in 2015 did one for the Louis Vuitton Foundation at the edge of the Jardin d'Acclimatation in the Bois de Boulogne. Paris, where Napoleon III planted tropical plants, the first giraffe was seen in France, as well as American uh, indigenous people. As the archaeologist moved on, he saw that the perplexity generated when the historical role of museums faded, he approached experts to the redefinition when art was still trying to be defined. As they had seen that it was not productive to look into what art is, some sociologists proposed to find out when there is art. If we stopped asking what is a museum, they said, and they explored when, in what conditions, they uh, arise, develop, fail, and renovate, maybe it will be easy to understand what this institution is and what it is used for. The most uh, concerning thing is not that the same expression arises museum for artifacts and practices that are so diverse, but also that it has become inconceivable to have cultures of all continents living together every day. The site where they could be, where we could have the traditional, the modern, and the globalized crafts art and the media living together as neighbors. There is lack of orientation of uh, times with all, no atlas or maps. He read in some blogs, rather than asking museums to recognize and make artifacts legitimate, we need to reimagine them as a place of debate and a desire for a time that has no longer table and where we have a, the coexistence of the umbrella with the sewing machine. Rather than showcases, we need platforms. Rather than rooms through which the exhibition progresses, we should set up multi-angular thinking. It was evident that in those times of disbelief of political utopias and crossing of cultures, it was hard to define uh, expositions with a historical sense. They said that it, they had to figure out what is uh, destroying the possibilities of keeping words, things, and statistics of visitors together, of building for disorder, heterotopies, ways of thinking and action that admit the uncomfort or the discomfort of differences and ungovernable uh, inequalities, and if possible, to be able to live um, bad moments with humor. These archaeologists did experiences, feel experiences in several countries, and he uh, perceived that the hypothesis obtained with the metadata was uh, problematic. For example, how to review the role of museums between post-internet, uh, post-digital TV times where the coming together of languages and religions on screens and cities had mixed devices for sorting. 
purposes. For example, what had caught his attention was that in some regions of Europe, after 2020, some curators could only win uh, competitions to run museums after having converted to Islam. And what to say about the trip that he had made in 2023 to Bilbao to consult at uh, castle archives that could not be found yet in Shanghai. The archaeologists knew that after the European economic catastrophe started in 2008, about 3,000 Spanish peoples were left with no inhabitants, and they were bought by Arab, Chinese, and Russian investors. While he was looking for tourist pages to organize that trip to Spain, on his screen, an, a commercial appeared of a site called abandonedideas.com with tests in Russian and Japanese, comments from Asian buyers who praised the beauty of those stones made with medieval stones, which could now be bought for the price of a, a garage for a car in a parking lot in London. When he reached the castle, he found a comfortable building of seven stories, rooms with chimneys, library, cellar, and masmorra. And he, the main Ibero-American uh, site of the Chinese Center had been, uh, for in, uh, research had been installed there. That 13th century building, renovated in the 14th by the Boutrong family, following the style of the Bavarian castles, and in the 19th by the uh, Marquis of Cubas at the beginning of the 21st century by a Spanish bank which uh, sold it, and finally by Chinese businessmen who failed in their attempt to make it to uh, attraction to the tourists for uh, weddings and medieval fairs. It was a suggestive uh, scenery to explore uh, criticisms to the notion of um, uh, human heritage. The reformulation of the notions of heritage and museum to adapt them to a times of interculturality that's globalized, where everyone is winner with them, was not going to be solved through algorithms. He found that in a 1994 memorandum of the Intellectual Property World Organization said that the copyright does not protect algorithms, but only the concrete expressions of them. The copyright can provide suitable protection for computer programs without creating uh, obstacles to the independent creation of new programs. Thus, what can museographic programs do with the diversity of heritage and creative ways that haven't been made a part of heritage that shift constantly after wars and migrations? Maybe, as he had read in a George Marcus book, they could only aspire to create proactive frictions between museographies and the multicultural desires of visitors and or tourists. Multiplying the points of view, accompanying objects with the intercultural histories of their appropriations, instead of the uniform aesthetization of uh, cultures that were so diverse, it would be better to study heritage and its variations over time as ways of keeping the answers that societies have been providing. However, art, he added, would be what, what a society does with something for which he doesn't find a response, what's unstable, what travels and changes, what does not consolidate a meaning that's socially shared or imposed effectively. Would this be useful for differentiating between art museums and anthropology and historical museums? He found lectures and congresses that were in this direction. They relocated arts as part of visual culture together with heritage and means of communication. But they were more rather theoretical papers, how to turn this multidisciplinary integration operational. He found leads in the strategies of some arts and 
their uh, performances in curatorship, such as installation and digital video and art on the web. This archaeologist opened his smartphone, uh, opened the uh, read screen, and looked up a book where he had found a redefinition of culture as repertoire, maybe an alternative to the notion of heritage. He was called Jazz in Action and had been written by Howard Becker and Robert Faulkner jazz uh, musicians and sociologists who wanted to understand how musicians who work in bars and parties, i.e. places where they find that they need to interpret a number of pieces which they not, not always know in advance, can play together with little or no rehearsal and with minimum written music to guide to find guidance. They believed that they could do it because they knew the same songs, but it wasn't like that. How do they make do? How can musicians make do if they cannot make sure that everyone knows the repertoire? Performance comes from what is invented and from what is already known. They share fragments of knowledge that combine when they play as a whole. Just like any other activity that several people undertake together, what jazz musicians do is not random or de-articulated but it's not totally fixed or predictable either. Proportions vary from one time to the other and from place to the other, but performances always mix both things. And the terms of the mix are not a simple application, a simple application of known ways of reaching an agreement, but rather a creation made on the spot. The discovery Faulkner and Becker explored with other groups how they could combine partial wisdoms in order to create a collective activity that was good enough for the variety of people involved. They found out that much is in the same way as jazz musicians, many others for curating or for curing stealing or getting drugs, instead of executing a program that all collaborators know about, are alert day after day, and they are just continuously their action according to what's happening. Rather than discovering laws that it would exist before the members of a group act, <coughs> that is to say, with an installed asset or legacy, they find repertoires for using for finding complications, conflicts, as it happens when different people try to do something together. In that trip to Spain in 2023, as he was traveling on a bus from the Bilbao airport to the castle, the archaeologist had visited the abandoned towns or villages that had been transformed and sold to foreigners. There were many reporters of Russian TV stations and Arabian ones that filmed the villages to advertise them in their countries. The Arab Arabian investors were installing casinos, restaurants, and theme parks for tourists to get some playground. Life was not governed by the seasons for sowing and harvesting and bird migrations, but by the vacation calendars of the countries where the visitors came from. There were some feasts and festivals, but the dates had been moved in order to adjust them to the Ramadan. And the new days of commemoration established by the Islam states, the romantic lyricism of the West in the purification about meeting with nature had been replaced by or with Iranian traditions and um, funeral ceremonies that were not identified. He thought about talking with a Spanish tourist agent or executive or perhaps a security executive to ask if they did not fear 
uh, that so many Arabian people arrived with their vacation programs. The European governments were only concerned with building electrified walls on the frontiers of the Mediterranean and bought from Microsoft their weekly reports. Investors crossed without controls all gates and they obtained the Schengen passport. They had never imagined in China where the Arabian, English and US investments were approved by the Ministry of Commerce or the political intelligence. They never imagined that in the Western countries it was so easy to reconvert villages, medieval villages, into tourist areas where steel clothes or video games and war equipment for high defense purposes. Would they be only uh, for entertainment? Now in the 2035 journey going around museums and Spanish and Latin American documentary centers, he read not only the exhibition catalogs, the audience surveys, the programs and annual assessments of culture ministries. He found rich information on the strategic plans of companies that were concerned with transportation of artwork and the insurance. In 2015, one of the main advisors of Zurich insurance company, Martin Sen, when the World Economic Risk Report established for the first time that natural catastrophes are more predictable than geopolitical risks. Climate change studies had enabled understanding or forecasting that the museums and archaeology sites on the shores due to the uh, danger of hurricanes and floods and tsunamis require more expensive insurance than those in flat areas and mountains. That was predictable, but who could anticipate 20 years before that the children of the Mexican cartel um, chiefs would trained in Harvard and Stanford would command, would, would um, turn into contemporary art collectors, attacking trucks, uh, hijacking airports to uh, keep the works of Jeff Koons, Amin Hurst, and Ai Weiwei. Geopolitical and intercultural conflicts that caused reactions in the Western countries when the Islam destroyed Assyrian monuments in Nimrud and Mosul had appeared with another logic in the regions of Latin America. In the second decade of the 21st century, the mafia extended its drug trafficking business to extortion and kidnapping. Uh, they needed to control the highways to um, transport drugs. They needed to siege cities and uh, agricultural territories. They included under their domain archaeological sites. They sold the Inca pieces that were delivered by the peasants, and they trafficked with these objects. They emptied many museums and treated directors and archaeologists that resisted with the same cruelty that they had seen on TV when the Islam activists had uh, beheaded the specialists that defended Palmyra and other historical sites. They left some old cities standing to organize their vintage tourism visits. Years before, the Mexican and Guatemalan police and army were unable to go to those controlled areas or areas controlled by mafia. In a meeting of the Ministry of Culture in 2022, someone had suggested that the only solution were drones. They had to take pictures and uh, shoot uh, fo video footage of the Palenque ruins, the Machu Picchu ruins, all the areas that had not been subject to this marketing trend and to reproduce in 3D the sites and museums in areas that were protected. Advertisers at the summit said that the same, in the same way as an image is worth more than 1,000 words, the promotion campaign of this new cultural pol policy would be focused on the formula, a museum is worth more than, more 
1,000 images. A Ministry of Culture objected to this, objected to the absence of uh, tours with their own body because of the physical remains of different societies. Those who had uh, adhered to the idea of intercultural wealth as a combination of repertoires admitted that they had to work on this notion as a dispute between originals and reproductions and the redistribution of the mafia territory. Finally, the initiative was um, discarded because there was not enough budget and because some museums and sites that would be protected also escaped from the radar of the states. The archaeologist had included as part of his scholarship program a trip to Buenos Aires to attend a museum congress that would take part in the first week of September 2035. When, as he was arriving in Ezeiza, he remembered the initial topics for his scholarship, and he thought that it would be, it was for the better that he had not been admitted to make a structured comparison between Asian, Mexican, and Peruvian museums. At the end, he only had fragments of dubious interpretation. That's why he was relieved not to have to provide a keynote speak, speech, but to talk only during a lunch and just share experiences and questions that had to do with the research. So his appointment was a Friday 4, September, September 4, during lunchtime as part for that conversation. Perhaps that word, conversation among cultures, was the one that was most suited for what museums could do. What he was concerned about was the distance between those who have a dialogue, a conversation, what they share, the meanings, and in those uh, flows that hide in the networks or among the networks where it is hard to get with the algorithms, ethnography, and congresses. Good afternoon. Thank you for your time in the first place. and. And thank you for being here because of your ill health. I would like to know if you believe in the deepest of your heart, at the bottom of your heart, that museums can actually be reinvented and reimagined. Because if we analyze the history of museums, we see that they have been permanently in a crisis. And there have been people that have reimagined them in a different way. So. My point or my question is, what is it that actually makes those ideals, those dreams or those purposes to fade or vanish? And the museum is ultimately the reflection of an elite only representing a few people or a few groups. In the first place, I believe that there are experiences that confirm that there have already been reimaginings and that many museums have not been limited to only a few. OK, let's not talk about the 9 million that go to the Louvre Museum or the 6 million that visit the Tate Gallery. In Mexico, I have seen exhibitions by Rivera and great Mexican artists with indigenous peoples that uh, come to the museum uh, poorly dressed. There are museums that are attended that have audiences of poor people or of the low classes. There are problems. We have conducted some studies, and we know that the audiences, we have found this experience to get into the Fine Arts Museum or the Fine Arts Palace, some of them would um, make the sign of the cross before they crossed the door. But in other cases, they feel at ease. They feel comfortable going to museums. And even though they may not find the guide or the usherer, they will circulate and they will go with their kids. And sometimes they uh, stand in line, sometimes uh, under the rain. 
to get into a museum. So we may mention many obstacles. There is no single obstacle. There is synergy of all institutions that would like to reproduce rather than change. There is synergy in or inertia in professionals that have learned to be guides or uh, curators in a certain way, and they don't want to change their ways. And then we have the sacred the sacred um, halo of museums, the lack of budget, and the sacred halo in the inertia of the audience, that they want to be, to stick to the old habits, to the old intellectual routines that were taught to them in school. There are many different experiences, and I believe that uh, many of them have been presented uh, here over the past two days. So I believe that the question about the obstacles or the challenges, maybe the, a, a more attractive question would be, what do we have to do to reimagine museums today? The text that I sent for the meeting yesterday, the roundtable I wanted to attend, uh, addressed two actions. One was to derive seduction on the building or from the building. The Arab world in China and also in some Western countries in the US and uh, not so much in Latin America. To, um, the, so the proposal would be to knock down the buildings. So the museum as a conversation, what I have just said, leads us to rethink the museum together with audiences and also with the intermediaries. If we do not modify the whole, it's very difficult. To try to form constituencies or audiences without changing the museum is hard. Or changing the museum and expecting an automatic change in the audience that was not trained to go to the museum, it would not be a good solution. So the conveyance of the message, the circulation of the message and distribution and reception, they will, be, they will not be connected. My question, in the first place, I would like to thank you for that amazing description you have made. What would be the opportunity, the window of opportunity that you see in this gloomy perspective or outlook you have shown to us? Would uh, there be any guideline that would help us out of this situation so that we can think of a better future? I was asked to talk about the concerns, what keeps me up at night. So what's in my mind? That's why one of the issues that concerns me, at, at least uh, since the last 10 years and uh, five years when I visited China and Japan, is the enormous potential for growth in those countries and how they are studying us. The US has many centers of study dedicated to Latin America, and we do not have the same range of research on US studies. Now there are some centers that are starting to open to study the US, China, or Asia in general. Some of them have very good academic level, but this is only this is a recent fact. Eight years ago, I read that of the total number of Mexican ambassadors in the world, only one of them spoke Chinese. They are training. Spanish speakers or English speakers, Western language speakers, they have been training them for many years. And they send crowds to our university so that they will uh, get familiarized with our ways of living. So I believe 
there is a geopolitical shift we should be more aware of and we should be more consistent with our perspective uh, looking at other areas of the world where reconfigurations are taking place and that is the only way we will be able to reconfigure our own perspective of museums. I believe this, I'm out of time. Thank you.